Hello, welcome back to another episode of A Big Adventure. I wonder where we're going today. I've got two clues for you. The first is this. Do you know what this is? Well done. Avocado. And the second is this. Have you ever seen one of these before? Have a think. Do you know where we're going? That's right, it's Mexico. Okay, we're going to Mexico today. Let's check where that is. We are here in the United Kingdom. And today we're traveling across the Atlantic Ocean all the way to Mexico, which is the most southern part of North America. It's just underneath the United States. When I visited Mexico, I was in Mexico City for Dia de Muertos, or Day of the Dead, on the 1st of November. This is a big festival that you might have seen in the Disney film Coco. If you've not watched this already, then you could watch it over summer and have a look at what happens during the celebration. Each year, Mexican families prepare for this special day where they believe that the loved ones who have died can come back and visit. They decorate the altars of their loved ones with all of their favourite things and beautiful flowers. You may remember this ornament that I showed you earlier. It is based on a piece of artwork called La Calavera Catrina, or more commonly known as La Catrina, by Jose Guadalupe Posado, a Mexican printmaker. He created this piece of art in the early 1900s, and since then it has become a symbol of Day of the Dead. Bakeries create sugar skulls based on the piece of art, and some people dress up or paint their face like it. Dia de Muertos is not the same as Halloween. It is not a scary celebration, it's a happy one, where families get together to remember their loved ones. Whilst I was in Mexico, I also went to visit Palenque, the ruins of an ancient Mayan city that's over a thousand years old. They estimate that they've only managed to uncover around 10% of this city, the other 90% is still either underground or hidden by jungle. You may not realise it, but you've probably had lots of Mexican food before, such as churros and tacos and guacamole. So, avocados are actually grown in the south of Mexico. They've been grown there for hundreds of years and were first eaten by the Aztecs. The Aztecs used to grind it up into a sort of paste or sauce, which has developed over time and is the guacamole that we eat today. Let's find out how to make guacamole. We're going to make guacamole. Mole means sauce, so guacamole literally means avocado sauce. We're going to need an avocado, which in Spanish is aguacate. Well done. A chili, which is up to you because it depends how spicy you might like your food. In Spanish, chili is really easy, it's chili some tomatoes, tomate, a lime, lima, a red onion, cebolla, and some coriander, which in the Americas is called cilantro. Okay, first we're going to take the cebolla. You need to cut each of the ends off of your cebolla or onion. And then it's easiest if you cut it in half first. You need to be really careful of your fingers here. We can't eat the outside of the onion, so we peel that bit off. When it looks like this, we can eat this part. Okay, the best way to dice an onion is you go in horizontally, if you can, be careful of your fingers, and then you go down vertically. And then you're going to go straight down like this. Where you've already cut the lines in, you're going to have diced onion. Oh, 
cut the onion into the bottom. Next, we're going to take our tomato. Now, you might want to use one larger plum tomato or a few smaller cherry tomatoes. It's up to you. And again, we just want to dice those. Next, we're going to take a lime, lima. We're going to cut that in half. So be careful because obviously it might roll away. If you've got a juicer at home, you can use a juicer to get the juice of the lime out. You just put it on top like that. If not, you can just squeeze it into the bowl. <laughs> over our mixture. Next we're going to take our cilantro or coriander and we're just going to finely slice it. You can use as much of this as you'd like to. Some people love the taste of coriander, other people don't enjoy it as much. You find it in lots of Mexican food and lots of curries as well. And we're just going to sprinkle that onto there. Next, you're going to take your aguacate or avocado. It should be quite soft to, to the touch. If it's too firm, you might need to wait a little bit longer because it might not be ripe enough yet. Inside the avocado is a big stone, so we can't cut straight through it. So you have to be very careful here. You might want to ask an adult to help you. You need to put your knife in as far as you can, and then we're going to slice around the edge of the avocado. It's quite soft for the knife to go in, but we cut all the way around. So we have a line going all the way, and then we twist. And our avocado should open like so. You can see the big avocado stone in the middle. That's why my knife wouldn't be able to go the whole way through. And I can just take that out. We don't eat the skin of the avocado, only the flesh. So an easy way to do this is to cut it in half again, now that you can use the board. And then we can just peel it off. until you have all of your avocado prepared. Then we're going to put this into a different bowl. We're gonna use a fork to mash the avocado. It should be quite soft, that's why we said earlier we wanted it to be soft. Okay, we've got our mashed avocado, our salad mix. The very last thing now is if you'd like to add a chilli, you can. It's up to you, it depends how spicy you like your food, but one chilli should be enough. Make sure after you've chopped the chilli that you wash your hands before you touch your eyes or your face. <laughs> Finally, we're going to add our chopped salad into our avocado. And there we go. You've made your very own guacamole. You could serve it with tortilla chips. Or, if you want to save your guacamole for later in the fridge, just pop the stone from the avocado inside to stop it from going brown. Join us next time for another big adventure.